unsolved. Tonight's, Tonight's episode, episode, The Physical, the physical Evidence, evidence of, of the Zodiac, Zodiac Killer. Killer. On today's video, I'm going to try to show you or present physical evidence that ties the Zodiac Killer to the crimes. And so, what I mean by physical evidence, there's bullet holes, there's shell casings, there's a lot of um, evidence, but I mean more DNA, fingerprints, a piece of hair, something physical that maybe we can uh, tie to somebody through some future forensics or present forensics. So that's what I mean. I'm limiting it only to something physical from the Zodiac Killer left at the crime scene or tied to the crime scene. So I'm briefly going to go through these crimes. So Roman numeral 1, Lake Herman Road, then Roman numeral 2, Blue Rock Springs Park, Roman numeral 3, Lake Berryessa, Roman numeral 4, San Francisco, and then Roman numeral 5, RCC in Riverside. And we know that that might not be a Zodiac crime, so that's why I put it at the end. And also, I'm not sure if I'm going to find all the information or provide all the physical um, evidence in this episode. So this might be a two-part episode. So this first crime at Lake Herman Road, I don't believe there's any physical evidence tying a person to these murders. I know that might sound shocking or a surprise. There's casings, there's bullet holes, there's things. I don't even think there's a footprint that they have to compare um, sh shoe size. So as far as I know, there's absolutely nothing on the first crime. Okay, now at the second crime scene, I don't think there's any evidence at all tying the Zodiac to the crime again. This is why it's hard to solve this case. There's no fingerprints on bullet casings. There's no handprints on the car door. There's no drop of blood from the Zodiac Killer. There's nothing there. But after the crime occurred, about 40 minutes later, a caller called at 12.40 a.m. in the morning, and switchboard operator Nancy answered the call, and she heard his voice. So we do have the voice of the Zodiac. Furthermore, after the Zodiac finished his call, he hung up the phone. And back in the day, if you hung up the phone to an emergency line like that, the phone would automatically ring back. It wouldn't let you hang up. You have to, well, it just rings. And then when that happened, a black gentleman nearby heard the phone ring, and then he looked over and saw the Zodiac Killer. And so I don't know what that description looks like, his description. So I'm going to look into that, and then I'm going to be, do a second part to this video. Okay, and then you have the letters that the Zodiac wrote after the crime, where he confesses to this crime and the December 20th crime. And he gives details about the crime. So that is the Zodiac Killer, in my opinion. So there you might have his saliva on the envelope or on the stamp on those envelopes that he mailed. Now on the third crime, you still didn't get any physical evidence directly tying the Zodiac Killer to the crime. But you did get 
his description from Brian Hartnell and the way his voice sounds and his writing on the car door so you can compare that to other writings. Now that's not exact, but it's helpful. And then the Zodiac Killer called again. And so you have his voice there and then he also wrote more letters. And so you have possibly DNA there. Now on the fourth crime, you did get a bloody palm print or some kind of hand print between the front door and the back door on the outside of the car. And there might be another print also. But here, it's still possible that this print isn't the Zodiac's print. Even though it's covered in blood, it's possible that somebody else put their hand there and then the blood got transferred onto the print. So you have that problem. Now, finally, the murder of Sherry Jo Bates, you can see the significance or importance of this case because there is skin and hair from the murderer. Sherry ripped it out of his skull and scratched him and got skin under her fingernails. And so as long as the Riverside Police Department saved that DNA or that sample, they could be tested for DNA. And we know, or I know, that the hair has been compared to a suspect a few years back. So we know they have, they can get DNA from the hair. I'm not sure about the skin, if they can get DNA from that. And what I mean by that is if they kept it, preserved it. Now back then they tested it and they determined it was a white male and that the hair color is brown. So you do have that fact. Now the murderer did type that confession letter and he mailed it four weeks after the crime, but he didn't put a stamp on the envelope. So as far as I know, there's no way to DNA test anything there. Maybe they can, you know, with modern technology. Okay, so recapping what we have. The Lake Herman Road, we don't have anything there. The Blue Rock Springs Park, all we have is the Zodiac's voice, and the black gentleman that saw him briefly, and the three letters that he mailed. Then Lake Berryessa, we have the Zodiac's voice and description from Brian Hartnell. We have possibly a shoe print. I didn't mention that earlier. And we have the writing on the car door. And then the San Francisco crime. We have a description not only by the police officer that might have saw him. There were some girls a floor up that looked down on the taxi and saw the Zodiac Killer. So they gave a description. And then we have bloody prints on the car, on the taxi. And then, of course, we have the letters. And then the big thing is the Riverside crime. If that is the Zodiac Killer, we have his hair, which is a big deal. Because from there, they can do the DNA testing, and it's there's no doubt about it. Well, this ends this episode of Unsolved, and I kind of like this episode. I kind of wish I would have done this sooner, and this is kind of a to-do list for me. So I'm going to go back, and those um, pieces of evidence, I'm going to look into them, look at some police reports, look into more detail about them, and might even ask some questions with the Riverside Police and uh, next weekend, there probably won't be a show. That's uh, the 4th of July weekend. 
And so it'll probably be two weeks before the next episode. So I'll see you then.